everybody, it's Wargamer Sean. We're here with Imperial Knights, um, part two. So we're going to go through the um, actual knights in the codex. There's more this time, three more to be precise, compared to the two that we had last time. Although, I do think Forge World's doing a little bit faster job, because I think we already have five knights uh, with them, maybe even more. I, I can't quite remember. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so we have the Knight Errant again that didn't change in cost. It's 370 points. Now um, he has a Heavy Stubber, Thermal Cannon, Reaper Chain Sword, and Ion Shield. Weapon skill bullets to go 4, Strength 10, Front side, front Armor is 13, Side and Rear Armor is 12, um, and has Initiative of 4, 3 attacks, and 6 hull points. He's a super heavy walker. Um, <clears throat> now... He can replace his chain sword, his Reaper chain sword, for a Thunderstrike gauntlet for 10 points. Uh, so we talked about that last time. I don't think going in initiative one is necessarily a good thing for him. So I think, honestly, I'd just keep the Reaper chain sword and save 10 points. Um, he's starting 70 points. He's, he's second uh, cheapest. There's one cheaper now, but he's you know still pretty cheap. Um, he's, and he can take a uh, melt gun instead of the Heavy Stubber for 5 points. Um... Five points and melt is nice, although honestly, if you're within 12 inches of something, you probably either want to assault it or stay away from it. So I don't know if that's such a boon uh, to to those these guys. I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, just be, I mean, I guess if you want to just run straight for him, there's a knight later on that I may want to consider that for because his job is just to go at him and do it. But um, I don't know. I'd probably just keep the heavy stubber and save five points. Um, now, the new thing that you can do, too, uh, besides the melt -a gun is you can take one of the following carapace weapons now. So now they can take carapace weapons. Um, they can take the Iron Storm Missile Pod the, uh, for 30 points, Twin Link Icarus Auto Cannon for 35 points, or the Storm Spear Rocket Pod for 40 points. Now, <clears throat> the um, Iron Storm Missile Pod is a strength 5 one. I probably wouldn't do that on this guy because your main thing is probably going to be tank or big things because it's it's a strength 9 large blast melta. Potentially in the Night Paladin you may want to, but I think in the Night Errant you don't, um, my opinion. The Twinling Icarus Auto Cannon I think is a good choice for any of them, honestly, because it gives you Skyfire, which they so desperately needed um, when the last Codex came out. So that's always a good choice, I think. Um, the Storm Spear Rocket Pod is Strength 8 AP3. Um, and I apologize because I forgot. I think it's three shots, but let me check because I don't want to. Um, yeah, it's Heavy 3, uh, Strength 8 AP4, 48 inch range. So honestly, um, I think that's a valid choice too for tank busting, it, which is what this guy kind of wants to do. So. Um, I, you know, I think that would be a good choice, potentially. Or you just don't put anything on him and keep him cheaper. Um, so that's the Knight Errant. He did change a little bit from last edition. <coughs> Not initial points or anything, but his upgrades changed. He didn't really have any upgrades before. You just took him as he was. Um, so the Knight Paladin is 375 points. Uh, same stats as the Knight Errant. Um, he's got two Heavy Stubbers, a Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, and um, Reaper Chain Sword Ion Shield. You can replace a chain sword with a thunder strike gauntlet for 10 points. Once again, we kind of talked about that. Um, may replace heavy stubber with a melt again, five points. Once again, I think this guy's job really, I don't know if he really wants that. I probably personally wouldn't take it just because he, he doesn't necessarily want to get close. Um, he, sometimes he does. Um, and then um, he can take the carapace weapons, the iron storm missile pod, Twin Link Icarus Auto Cannon, Storm Sphere Rocket Pod. Now, <clears throat> in his case, I think all three of them are potentially an option just because the Iron Storm Missile Pod kind of depends on what you want to do with them, but that potentially gives you some more anti infantry, which, if you're using your Battle Cannon for that, that may help. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, and if you're doing that mainly for anti infantry, you probably want to keep your stubbers and not um, take the Melt Gun. Once again, I'm not a really big fan of the melt gun on these guys, to be honest with you. Um, but I think the Auto Cannon and the Storm Spear Rocket Pot are valid, so any any of those three upgrades I think are, are decent choices for him. Um, the next a new um, knight is a Knight Warden. Now, he's 375 points. Um, he comes with an Avenger Gatling Cannon, which is a Strength 12. Um, let me just make sure I've got it right. 
um, strength 12, uh, sorry, strength 6, AP 3, heavy 12 rending. <clears throat> so it can be, it's rending, so it can be AP 2, but strength 6 is pretty good. 12 shots, I mean, that's awesome. He's especially, I think, good to consider if you're going to take them as your primary detachment and have somebody as your commander where he's going to have a better ballistic skill. This guy is the one you kind of want because he's got a lot of shots you want him hitting. Um, and then he's got a heavy flamer um, and a heavy stubber and um, a reaper chainsword and ion shield. He's got the same, same stats as the other guys. Um, he can replace his chainsword with a thunderstrike gauntlet for 10 points. Kind of talked about that. He can replace one, it can replace his heavy stubber with a melt gun for 5 points. Eh. I mean, <laughs> honestly, if I had the option of taking that flamer and, uh, and um, making it into a heavy stubber, I probably would. Because, <laughs> um, once again, I don't think he's going to be close. Because um, that Gatling cannon is 36 inches. Um, you can replace... Uh, you can make take... The following carapace weapons, Iron Storm, Missile Pod, Twin Link, Icarus, Auto Cannon, Storm Spear, Rocket Pod. So 30 points, 35, and 40 points. Once again, I think this guy actually has uh, all three of those upgrades are beneficial to him because I could see them all being used, to be honest, depending on what you want his role to be. Because I think he's good at pretty much anything. I mean, he could do light vehicles pretty well. He could do monstrous creatures pretty well. He can do um, infantry very well. So... I, I kind of I like this guy. I think he's kind of neat. I would not give him the gauntlet. Um, I probably wouldn't give him the melt gun, but um, I think he's a viable option to run. And I just keep the chainsword. Um, the knight uh, gallant is uh, one of the other new ones. He's 325 points. He comes with a heavy stubber, um, reaper chainsword, thunderstrike gauntlet, and iron ion shield. And he's 325 points. So he's got two close combat weapons. Um, so his stats, even though he's got three attacks, he's going to have four attacks, and then if he charges, five, because he's got two close combat weapons. And you can choose which one you want to use. I personally would just keep using the chain sword, just because I think um, that's going in initiative is better than going at initiative step one, and what, what you get with the hurl is, in my opinion, not that great. Um, <clears throat> he replaces heavy stubber with a melt gun for five points. And this is the one guy I might consider doing that just because his job is really just rush forward and just attack things. And so he's going to be in your face, so the melt -a guns potentially more useful for him. But I, who knows, I might not even do that with him, honestly. So I might want to just keep him cheap. Um, I like that formation that we talked about last time, uh, the Gallant formation, where you can take three of these guys, the Gallant Lance, and they get Crusader and Rage. I mean, that's just amazing because they've got... So they've got four attacks base, and then they get rage, which is um, going to be um, uh, six attacks plus D3. I mean, that's it's pretty amazing. I mean, that's an awesome lance. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's amazing. Now, um, you can give him the three carapace weapons, Iron Storm Missile Pod, the Icarus Auto Cannon, and the Storm Spear Rocket Pod. I guess it depends on where you're putting your points elsewhere. If you, if they're going to just run three knights and you're going to have other things, you may not really need that those upgrades and kind of keep them cheap. Um, because you or you could take the iron storm missile pod, have strength five, AP four, large blast barrage, and kind of hit people as you're going in. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, or even the st the storm spear rocket pod, um, or the auto cannon. Um, actually with him, I don't know, I might even just keep him cheap or I'd think about the anti-air because he could kind of serve two purposes um, as he's running forward on turn two before he gets in close combat. Um, as, you know, your the flyers are starting to come on, he can have interceptor on those, shoot those, and then the next turn on his turn go and chomp something or destroy something. So uh, me personally, I'm thinking of using the autocannon one with him um or potentially nothing I, I who knows i mean i might play with it it's hard with these guys because with normal models you can just go okay well it's easy to convert these guys these are big models and so i i, I haven't put my kit together i don't know how easy they're going to be to convert to be able to interchange these weapons on these guys i don't know <clears throat> but i i do kind of like the glant when i first looked at it, i'm like yeah what the heck he's just two close combat weapons not so great but actually, for his price, I, I kind of like him. Um, the next one, the last one, is the Crusader, the Knight Crusader. Now, he's 425 points, so he's the most expensive one. <clears throat> now, he 
has the same stats, but he comes with an Avenger Gatling Cannon, a Heavy Flamer, a Heavy Stubber, a Thermal Cannon, and an Ion Shield. So he's basically kind of like an Errant and a Warden kind of mixed together. And then you can um, replace the Heavy Stubber with a Meltagun. Once again, I don't think you really want to get close with this guy because he doesn't have any close combat weapons. So he's just hitting in Strength 10. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, you could t take the uh, thermal cannon and trade it in for a rapid fire battle cannon and heavy sub for five points, which may actually be worth it um, for his job because that other weapon is doing 12 shots at AP3. You're probably going to, you know, I think that ordinance one might be the better way to go. Um, <clears throat> you can also take the following, you know, carapace weapons of the Iron Storm Missile Pod, the Icarus Auto Cannon, or the Storm Spear Rocket Pod. Um, and I think all of those would be excellent choices for him, depending on what you want him to do. Um, he's the most expensive knight, and I think I would probably maybe proxy him and play him once. But honestly, I don't see you really using him at all. And it's not because of his point cost. If his point cost was high and he was really good, I would, might use him. The problem I have with him is he has no D weapon, and that's not everything. But um, And I still, like with my Eldar, still run... The double D um, uh, um, weapon, and I just in close combat, he's just got strength 10. But um, <clears throat> the problem is, is that um, I think he, I think he kind of needs that D weapon because I think he's going to be a magnet. And he's going to want to charge at some point. I mean, maybe he can just stand back and shoot, um, and that was his whole job. But I like them being able to have dual purposes and be able to handle their own if they need to charge or get in close. And him, I don't know if I really want to get him close. He still gets a stomp, don't get me wrong, but I think he's not as powerful because he doesn't have a D close combat weapon. So I personally probably wouldn't run him, to be honest with you. I mean, maybe, maybe I'd proxy one. I'm just not that I'm not that impressed with him. I certainly probably wouldn't put the melt gun on him because, honestly, I don't want him close to anybody. I want him shooting back you know, it's kind of a fire support unit. The, the sucky thing is, is that these guys kind of, the close combat thing helps them with the stomp, but you're kind of like taking that away from him because you kind of want to keep him back so you don't want him to die because he's a, he's basically like a fire base. Um, and, and most of the other knights, I think, serve a dual purpose. You know, they can do multiple things. They can be close combat. They can, you know, if they need to be in a pinch, no matter what variant they are, except for this one, um, and um, they can shoot and they can do, you know, versatile roles, which they kind of need to for their points that they're costing, especially if you're going to run more than one of them. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I, I'm i not a big fan of the Night Crusader, in, in my opinion, um, but that's, that's my opinion. Um, I might see if I can, you know, kind of magnetize things and and actually huh, funny enough looks like and i'll kind of show this if i can uh, maybe i can't if it but if you look here it looks like gw actually put magnets in the arm so they can trade out the arms it almost almost certainly looks like magnets there um so they probably did it to be able to change it out which is smart um yeah because i don't see that on some of the other ones, so I, I bet that's. Oh, I wonder. It looks. Like, it really looks like a magnet. Um, but I don't know. That's not my. It would not be my personal choice for the um, the knights. So that's the end of the um, night review. There's just going to be two videos because once again, it's kind of a short, uh, smaller codex. Um, and. Um, that's just kind of the way um, the Knight Codex is. You can take it as a primary force if you can get the exact points. I think that's going to be difficult to do. But, um, you know, I think you're going to see them more on the field again. Honestly, though, um, you know, when the Knights first came out, they were very scary. And it was kind of like GW's way to kind of force in super heavies and, you know, large creatures. And people were very against them. But they kind of eased it in because they only had a D close combat weapons. They didn't have any shooting D weapons, so that kind of calmed people. And they got accepted very quickly. Um, now, there's already talk from multiple channels or uh, places about comp and different things, which I'm going to probably do a separate video on. But, um, <clears throat> um, you know, them coming in with these, they're just kind of... Uh, 
I think, a way of kind of brushing them up a little bit. The problem is, is that there's so many things now that I think can deal with knights or super heavy walkers or super heavy vehicles that I don't think they're as scary as they used to be. And they potentially have their weaknesses because if you're playing Maelstrom missions, they're, they're going to have a hard time accomplishing it for their points because there's not enough bodies on the table. Um, honestly, too, I think there's ways to deal with them, too. So um, I don't think they're as scary as they, they once were. Um, and I think over time, uh, other things like the Elder Codex and, and things like that will, will be less scary as time goes on. With My hope is, is that people don't jump to comping things right away or changing the rules on things right away. I understand that there's people that have played many games already with some of these new armies, but I beg people to give it some time before you change the rules on things. Because remember, I mean, it, you know, anytime you do that, you're, you're you're changing the game to some degree, and, and there's arguments that people say, well, you're changing it no matter what. But I, I beg to differ because... Yes, it's true on some tournaments people will put restrictions on how many detachments or, or CADs you can have. And I think 7th edition kind of doesn't really care about that. And I, honestly, I personally am running a tournament later this month. that, And last month we had it too where there wasn't any limit. You could bring as many detachments as you wanted, as many, you know, as many formations as you wanted. Um, last last month I did one like that, but I only had that you could bring one Lord of War or up to three knights, um, just to kind of ease people into it. But this month I'm just letting them go full bore, and we'll see how it goes. But I, I really people didn't really you know t take advantage of it. And I think as a TO you can kind of write things in so that like I had one where one of half of the part of the mission was a kill point mission, but any formation or uh, detachment that you killed entirely you get a bonus five kill points or five victory points for your kill points so it didn't help if you had multiple formations you had you know uh, had a hard road ahead of you to like you know um, not get outscored on kill points so um, I think there's ways of kind of writing that in to be honest but I mean you know I, I should stop here. I mean, we'll just talk about the Knights more, but I think the Knights, uh, I think it's worth getting the Codex. I know it's, it hasn't been that long, which is frustrating, but it, it's 7th edition now. I think it's kind of changing things. It's getting, I think it's adding things to the game. I think the Warlord traits are very good. I, I don't think that the uh, special gear is that amazing, but I do think the Warlord traits are good, and I think some of the formations are good. I do still think that, um, that the Adamantium Lance is potentially still valid now you can only take knight paladins and knight errands but if you have this new book potentially you could do some of the other upgrades to them too but i as a to wouldn't have a problem with people still running adamantium lance the hard thing with the adamantium lance is that you have to stay within four inches of each other to benefit and honestly that becomes hard depending on how you write your missions um to do that if you're trying to accomplish maelstrom missions too so um, anyway, um, I'm going to have some more videos coming. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you do, uh, please subscribe and, and like. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers this year. Um, hopefully I can do that. Um, next year's goal is it will probably be to get to 1,000. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, uh, any ideas or any things that you want to see or any, you know, uh, points you want to bring up, please leave comments below right down here and um, if there's things that you want to see in future videos leave them down here and I will try to do it as, as many of you know or as some of you know I, I've had requests from different uh, viewers and I've made videos for them already um, you know that they wanted to see so I will try to accomplish whatever you know people ask so feel free to ask away and I will do it and in the meantime keep on wargaming and have fun guys goodbye goodbye Goodbye. 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 Bye bye. Goodbye. See ya. Bye for now. Bye for now. Goodbye. I like bottoms.